Good evening, board members and members of the public. My name is George Patanovic. I live at 597 Old Gateville Road in Stony Point, and I'm president of the Stony Point Action Committee for the Environment. Uh, I have addressed this board on the issue in the past, and also the Zoning Board of Appeals, which, is, as you know, is currently uh, considering the variances that are being requested. Uh, I also sent the uh, chairman uh, to the planning board a copy of a letter that I sent to the Zoning Board that okay. is uh, very applicable to the issues that we're considering here. I'd just like to hit a, if that letter is on file, I'd like to, it's a December 3rd letter, uh, but I'd like to hit upon some of the points in that letter. Um, the RHP properties, uh, which purchased Baymore in June of 2011, uh, is now requesting to subdivide, subdivide the property into 138 lots, and approximately 124 of those lots require over 250 area variances uh, for a combination of front side and side yard setbacks. They do not conform with the existing town zoning bulk code requirements under the town law. Uh, in the most extreme case, RHP Properties is requesting that a 50-foot lot be reduced to 26 feet, roughly. And we, we learned at one of the previous meetings that these mobile home units are going to be about 16 feet wide, uh, leaving only about 10 feet for the side yards, which divide by two each side, uh, five-foot side yards. Um, for at least some of those lots, this, this smaller size lots are up to about 32 of the units that are being considered. Um, I have a concern about that in terms of the density that's being proposed for this development. I think it's important that this development is done. Obviously, we'd like to see uh, the improvements made there, but this is an extreme case of high density development. Now, when the, when the RHP properties purchased this land uh, in June of 2011, not knowing that Hurricane Sandy would be coming in October, um, like many people were surprised by that. Um, they obviously, the, the plan perhaps changed. Uh, but we're looking at a, basically a new development here on, on this property. And going into it, they would know that uh, certain road widths had to be maintained. New road widths had to be maintained to, to allow adequate fire access, which has been done on this, on this um, uh, proposal. Um, setbacks from the, from the wetlands, things have to meet current regulations. And of course, that leaves less land for um, the units themselves. So here what we're trying to do is squeeze in 138 uh, units uh, where only 100 would be permitted by the zoning code as it, as it uh, currently exists. Um, also the fact that this has been something that this board and the building inspector have been working on, uh, like I said, for the last 18 or more months uh, to try to fit in 138 units and we're uh, asking for these number of variances in the site plan map that you're now handing over to the zoning board basically to give their stamp of approval. You know, Bill said it's okay, let's give the stamp of approval. Uh, that's not the way to do zoning. You can't look, they can't look at the individual zone, zones for individual lots as we would normally do when they consider zoning variances. You gotta look at this whole package. And like I say, a number of them are extremely small size lots. I'm not sure if all of them may not get variances, but certainly those, those and maybe others, we should be looking at them as individual lots. And this is a high density, use of this property. Now, um, fire codes in New York State, from my understanding, require a minimum of 10 feet between units. I mean, is it safe for us to, to have only five feet on each side of side yard in the case of the most extreme variances that are being requested? So five feet on my side, five feet on my neighbor's side, about 10 feet distance between mobile home park. I'm not sure that I want to have my home next to another one if it went on fire or something like that, only 10 feet away from it. I'm not sure if that includes steps and other kinds of things you might contain in your side yard. Doesn't it seem awful uh, crowded? Uh, I don't know. It seems to me that it would be. Uh, and here, you as a board are, are giving your approval on a, on a map or considering your approval on a map that contains that kind of uh, high density use of this property. Um, I don't think that's right. Um, as the building inspector said to the ZBA, to look at this whole subdivision, which not, I guess you're not calling it a subdivision, but it is in effect a subdivision of mobile home units. Uh, we know what the zoning is in this town. We made the zoning specifically to allow mobile homes to be used by right. But this is an extreme case of overuse of the property. Uh, the Rockland County Planning Board sent you comments saying exactly that. You're setting a bad precedent for the town. You're not considering the impacts that it's going to have by putting that many units on, on these sides. Um, lots. Uh, also, your um, the EAF Part 2 uh, on page 10 of the EAF Part 2 um, asks the question of whether this is consistency with community plans. 
and the check the box was checked no. Uh, whether this was consistency consistent with community plans. And uh, the proposed, uh, number C says proposed action is inconsistent with local land use, land use planning and zoning regulations. Well, it is inconsistent with uh, planning regulations. I mean, it's inconsistent because we're allowing or a request for variances that well exceed our current zoning regulations for that property. Zoning regulations that we made to make those properties a legitimate use. Uh, the proposed action may cause a change in density of development that is not supported by existing infrastructure. Uh, we know we have flooding on Beach Road, which is right adjacent. This is one of the major roads that leads to this development. Have we addressed that at all in terms of the impact it's going to have? And what about the development of Baymar? I mean, it was talked about as a traffic study would be done by, I'm sorry, by Eagle Bay. We're saying a traffic study is going to be done by Eagle Bay. How is that traffic going to impact this property? Or aren't we looking at this as a whole area of a waterfront? Doesn't sound like new work. It sounds like we're letting Eagle Bay do its thing, produce a, a future uh, a traffic study, and not really considering doing a traffic study for this property. Um, also, on 18, on page 10 of 10 of the EAF Part 2, the proposed action may displace affordable or low income housing in an area where there's a shortage of such housing. Um, <coughs> we don't know what the units are going to cost. One of the reasons why we gave the zoning changes to mobile home parks was to maintain affordable housing in the town. Yet the applicant claims they can't give an idea of what the cost of these units are going to be until they get an approved site plan map. Uh, we heard tonight from the person from Legal Aid who was concerned about the six or seven families or whatever that are remaining there. Uh, and, the, and the applicant has said they're trying to negotiate some kind of an agreement with them. They should be made whole. They shouldn't be held responsible for this. Some of them have uh, lived there for 20 years. Some people have lived there as long as, as short as four years and took mortgages out during the time they purchased this property from RHP properties. And we're never told that they were going to be evicted four years later. And now they're holding a mortgage on a property that they can't really even move anywhere. That doesn't seem right. And I think as a board, we have a responsibility to still appoint people that live here now. Um, we shouldn't be giving a rubber stamp to this project. We should be looked at closely. I think the zoning board is going to get a project that the building inspector has worked with the applicant. I've never seen this happen before, where the building inspector works with an applicant on uh, developing a site plan, and then asks the zoning board to give a, uh, approval to variances as an entire lot of property. I've never seen that happen before. I'm not sure that I've ever seen that anywhere, uh, and whether that's even a legal thing to do. Um, you wonder whether the building inspector is working for the town or working for the applicant. Uh, Eagle Bay is, is represented by the same attorney as Baymar. So I don't know what's being coordinated here. Are we looking at these as uh, one cooperating with the other, uh, not doing a traffic study, saying they were, say Eagle Bay is going to do a traffic study? It's a bit confusing the way it's being done. The town is considering a skateboard park right across the street. That hasn't even been discussed. Um, the traffic impacts of that, I'm not sure what they're going to be. But that hasn't even been talked about in regards to close proximity to this property. So a lot of the comments that I've made already are on the record, and the ones I submitted in writing you have, and I hope that you consider them. Um, and making your decision. But I think it's important that we look at our waterfront as a valuable piece of property and think about how we're going to plan it. What we're going to have along our waterfront. Right now we have two major projects, this project and the Eagle Bay, and what's going to happen to the rest of our waterfront property. I think it's important for you as a planning board to, to look at that as a comprehensive project, a comprehensive area, and look at it at, uh, in a conscientious way. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, George. May I have 30 seconds rebuttal, really quick? Yeah, um, <clears throat> very quickly. Um, the issues with the tenants and um, the issues of real property law uh, that uh, Alex pointed out um, are certainly valid issues, but uh, I respectfully submit they're not valid issues before this board. This board is here to um, look at and approve a, a site plan. Um, and just to Mr. Uh, Potomac's uh, comments, um, this isn't a subdivision. It's one big site. There is no subdivision involved in, uh, in Baymar. Um, we did classify the variances in different <coughs> categories. That is true. But um, again, that's the zoning board's decision. And I respect his comments. I'm sure they were made at the ZBA. And um, we're waiting for a decision from them. And they're an independent board. And, We'll hear what they have to say. Um, finally, um, uh, 
uh, Baymar is Mr. Uh, Emanuel's client. Um, I'm here of counsel to him tonight. Um, Eagle Bay is my client, so it's not exactly as though we're representing the same people. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments for Eagle Bay? I mean for Baymar, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. 